stay there if you wouldn't mind. Uh, please have a seat. I'm just wondering whether you heard those... You did. Uh, I think it's, again, right and proper if we pray for uh, Karnishka and Kaylee. Um, and I've invited Archdeacon Hartley and the bishops and the cathedral staff that are present to join us on stage. And we're not laying hands on them, we're giving them a group hug uh, as I invite the Reverend Stuart Pearson to pray for them. I've invited Reverend Pearson to pray for them. Uh, he has known Kanishka since year seven at school. He, was, uh, he has known Kanishka before he became a Christian. And uh, they were, and went to college together as well. Uh, and so I've invited him to read, but for now, if the cathedral staff, the bishops and Archdeacon Hartley can join us on the stage. Thank you, Reverend Pearson. Ah, just one moment. Friends, let me uh, lead us in prayer. Our gracious God and Heavenly Father, as we gather together as your saved people, we want to thank you for all your spiritual mercies we have in Christ Jesus our Lord. Tonight, we want to give you our thanks and praise that you have raised up Kanishka to serve you and the cause of your gospel in the role of the next Archbishop of Sydney. We give you thanks for the wisdom and experience he has gained as an evangelical, both within our diocese and outside of it, as he seeks to lead us through challenging times and offer help to those outside our diocese. We pray for him as the guardian of the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints, as he seeks to preach and teach your word, both faithfully and persuasively. We also pray that you would grant him knowledge and insight as he seeks to authorise godly and able women and men to the many and varied ministries in our diocese. We pray for him as he seeks to exercise pastoral concern and insight as he leads us in gospel mission and ministry. To that end, we would pray that he would continue to trust in Jesus and depend on the Holy Spirit. We pray for Kanishka that, he would continue, that you would continue to give him a clear, biblical, evangelical, Anglican voice as he seeks to present the diocese to the world. And we pray that you will aid Kanishka in the administration of our diocese as he seeks to align governance, policy and processes to serve the cause of gospel mission and ministry. We give you thanks for Kanishka's humility, gentleness and faithfulness towards Christ and pray that uh, it would continue to mark his time as our Archbishop as he seeks to glorify you alone. Heavenly Father, we also want to bring before your throne of grace Kanishka's wife, Kaylee. We give you thanks for the constant support and encouragement that she has been to him over many years. We pray that she would know your peace and assurance that comes from your love and help as she copes with the coming changes. May Kanishka continue to love and care for her as Christ loved and cared for the church. Heavenly Father, we also want to thank you and pray for our brothers Peter, Chris and Michael for their readiness to stand as nominees for the, this election synod. We pray that they and their wives, Julie, Belinda and Felicity, I know the calm of your peace and your sustaining love in the days ahead. And finally, we pray for ourselves that you might temper in each of us any unrealistic expectations that we might have of Kinishka as he takes up this formidable role 
with the daunting challenges of our time, that we might remember that he is a forgiven sinner, just like us, who has been blessed with many gifts and abilities that has been recognised by us as a synod. Help us to uphold Kanishka and Kaylee in our prayers, and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Mr. President, members of Synod, Kanishka Rafal, St. Andrew's Cathedral. Uh, thank you for that uh, a very moving welcome. I'd like to read scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5. What, after all, is Apollos? And what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labour. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. I'd like to begin with a few words of thanks. Uh, I do want to thank uh, Peter and Chris and Michael uh, for their wholehearted devotion to serving the Lord Jesus and our diocese and for their willingness to be nominated uh, the four of us have been able to pray together through this process. Uh, on Tuesday night, uh, along with our wives, we um, uh, had dinner together and uh, finished the evening in prayer. Uh, I hold them all in high esteem and affection, as should we all. They're men of God and faithful servants of the Lord, and I'm delighted to have the privilege to serve alongside them. I want to thank Bishop Lynn for serving as president of this election synod. It's a difficult and demanding job. Generally speaking, you haven't done it before when it comes around and you don't get to do it again. So it's always a first timer's job. Uh, Peter's presidential address, um, as the four of us listened to it in the up, up, uh, upper gallery, uh, we all thought that he should have been nominated. Uh, it was full of, uh, full of strategic insight and passion for gospel mission. Uh, that characterises uh, Peter's ministry and for which we thank God. And I want to thank you, the members of Synod, for your generosity and your serious-mindedness and your prayerfulness in undertaking this task. We sought the Lord and he uses this means, his own people, in prayerful uh, fellowship and discernment. Uh, so I, we're all very grateful to you. Uh, for those who made speeches for and against, uh, it's a challenging but essential part of the process and we all trust and believe that you did it in good faith for the good of the gospel as best you discerned it. Uh, I'm grateful too for your dedication not just to this task but to the life of your local church and for the mission that we share across the diocese in churches, schools, and agencies. 35 years ago, the Lord brought me. To the foot of his cross. There he washed me of sin and made me his own. There he filled me with his spirit and called me to his service. These are precious truths, but they are not rare. They are true of every Christian, and I thank God for his work in all of you who call on the name of the Lord. The diocese has been extraordinarily blessed in so many ways over such a long time, but one of its great strengths is its dedication to being biblically informed 
spirit-dependent, servant-hearted people of God. The lay women and men of our diocese live out their devotion to Jesus in their homes, churches, workplaces and communities, bearing patient and gracious witness to the Lordship of Jesus in your lives. What a marvel that is. The clergy equip the saints for this ministry and I'm grateful to be among them as one involved in this regular ongoing work. This blesses the world and honours the Lord and in our particular cultural moment creates the spaces and the possibility and the opportunity for vulnerable, purposeful conversation about the things of God and his gospel. As Peter Hayward said in his presidential address on Monday, you've elected an archbishop for an important task, but be assured that it is in the impact of the gospel in your own personal and corporate lives that God is constantly at work for his glory. Someone wrote to the four nominees earlier this week and reminded us that there is no higher dignity than to be called a child of God, born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, nor of a husband's will, but born of God through faith in Jesus Christ. No greater dignity exists than to be called a child of God. Led by the Spirit of the Lord, you have bestowed on me a great responsibility. I feel a tremendous sense of privilege, and not a little daunted, to be called upon to serve the diocese in this way, as together we proclaim the excellencies of him who called us out of darkness and into his wonderful light. May we, as the Apostle Peter says, live such good lives among the Gentiles that they may see our good works as a sweet adornment of the gospel we proclaim and so in God's grace come to join us in giving glory to God on the coming day of his visitation. You have been prayerful these days and for many days in advance and many others as well in your churches and agencies. Please don't stop. Pray for yourselves, your families and your churches that we may live faithful and fruitful lives for the dear Lord who loved us and gave himself for us. Pray for your ministers and for those who serve alongside them in your local area, for perseverance, encouragement, and trust in God for the mission. Pray for our diocese, the bishops and archdeacons standing committee, for the staff of SDS. Pray for our schools, their heads and councils, teachers and chaplains, for Anglicare and our agencies, their boards and staff, who all serve the Lord in the community. And I'd be grateful if you'd pray for me and for Kaylee as we undertake this role. When I became a rector for the first time, a faithful missionary who's now in his 90s gave me these verses to which I frequently turned. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9. The Lord said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. You have elected a weak servant, and you too are but weak servants. But we have a mighty saviour, full of grace, sovereign, sufficient, supreme, having the supremacy in all things, so that through him, God was pleased to reconcile all things to himself by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. If I can make you a pledge, if I dare to, it's this, to stand at the foot of the cross, weak, dependent, and forgiven, and from there, to seek to serve as the Lord enables. So then, to him 
to the Lamb who was slain. Be all power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honour and glory and praise forever and ever. Amen. Thank you.